Welcome to Chapter 5, Printing Comes to Europe. The creation of topography increased the demand for books, and the emerging literate middle class and students and rapidly expanding universities created a social climate in which the production of books had to be increased and tasks in connection to book production had to be specialized, such as papermaking. Without papermaking, the speed and efficiency of printing would have been useless. So in connection with papermaking, I want you to define the word xylography, and I'd also like you to define the word topography. In this picture is an example of a watermark, which was a translucent emblem made by pressure from a raised design on the paper mold and visible when the sheet of paper is held to the light. It was used in Italy around 1282 AD. This mark includes trademarks for paper mills, religious symbols, or trademarks for individual craftsmen. Eventually, the marks were used for sheet and mold sizes and paper grade. Things like mermaids, unicorns, animals, and flowers were some of the common design motifs. Let's start with European block printing because it is the earliest form of European printing. The origins of woodblock printing in Europe are not known. What we do know is that after the Crusades opened Europe to Eastern influences, relief printing arrived right after paper. Mm -hmm. Playing cards are an early example along with religious prints. Playing cards are an early example of block printing along with religious prints. Card playing was popular throughout Europe, with underground block printing supplying the cards to the common man, which was denounced by some churchmen before 1400 AD. So, something as simple as a game became the first graphic design to move into a largely illiterate culture. These cards introduced the masses to symbol recognition, sequencing, and logical deduction. The game of kings was now the game of every man. In this picture, the first known block prints with communication function were devotional prints of saints. The size was varied. Images and lettering were cut from the same block of wood. These early graphic design evolved into block books, which were woodcut picture books with religious subject matter and brief text. Each page was cut from a block of wood and printed as a complete work and picture unit. It is not known if the block book preceded the, type of bo the typographic book. Visual elements are dominant and typical subjects once again are devotional prints of saints or religious materials. What I want you to be able to do is to give me some examples of early block printing and then looking at these images to be able to describe the graphic characteristics of the images in general. And all three of these images contain basically the same characteristics. Death was a very popular subject due to various plagues that wiped out major portions of the European population during the Middle Ages. So the Ars Moriendi, which is literally the manual on the art of dying, was made to help prepare people for death. It may have also been an early propaganda piece as it urged people to will their estate to the church. This one contained 11 illustrations depicting the temptation of the devil and the comfort of an angel on subjects such as faith and patience in the final hour of death. In this book, the Ars Memorandi prefigures Evangelisterium. How's that for a mouthful? You see the hand-painted washes of color used to enliven a woodcut's symbolic imagery. Most black books contain 30 to 50 leaves. Some 15th century black prints um, actually use tinsel, tiny quartz crystals um, to bring a tactile quality or once again illuminate the image. Early black books were only printed on one side because they were printed using a hand rubber, while later blocks were printed on both sides because they were done on a press. Because of the specialization of crafts in the secular world, there was a distinction between the designer and the cutter of the blocks by the trade guilds. The monastic designer, however, often cut his own wood block. Usually cutters were members of carpentry guilds. Movable type was the next logical step from block book printing and it was Johann Gutenberg of Mainz, Germany, who was the man to bring complex systems together to print a typographic book around the year 1450. Gutenberg apprenticed as a goldsmith to gain the necessary skills for metalworking, and he labeled 10 years before his first printing and 20 years before printing the first typographic book, which is the 42-line Bible. The key to Gutenberg's invention was the type mold. It was used for casting individual letters. Each letter had to be parallel in every direction and the same height. 
He invented his own formula for the metal to cast the type. It had to be hard enough to hold up to thousands of impressions, but not too hard that it would crack and break. His formula of 80% lead, 5% tin, and 15% antimony maintained a constant mass through the critical printing process. Up to 50,000 pieces of type could be used at one time and the design of the mold was critical. Type was stored in compartmentalized cases and pulled out letter by letter to set the lines. After printing, the type was returned to its cases and reused. I've illustrated on this slide the different pieces to the type mold. And here is an illustration that depicts the early printing process. And I have pointed out a couple elements for you. Early surviving examples of typographic designs include indulgences. I want you to be able to define this term, and I want to discuss why this practice by the Catholic Church was extremely controversial. In this picture, we see an example from John Gutenberg, printed in 1454 AD. Gutenberg entered into a partnership in 1450 with Johann Fust, a local merchant, to help finance his work. Then, Gutenberg set about to create his first typographic book, the 42-line Bible. This is still today one of the greatest examples of the printer's art. You need to know the characteristics surrounding the production of this manuscript. Unfortunately, as the work was almost complete in 1455, Fust sued Gutenberg, and on the night that this Bible was to be completed, Gutenberg was locked out of his printing shop. He could have paid his debts with the completion of the Bible. Gutenberg's debt to Fust was about 2,000 guilders, which amounted to many millions of dollars in today's currency. Then Fust entered into an agreement with Gutenberg's assistant, Peter Schoffer. Peter Schoffer was an artist and a designer who was not only a manuscript dealer, but he was an experienced illuminator and scribe and possibly played a key role in the development of the type design and format for the 42-line Bible. Fust and Schoffer became the most important printing firm in the world. Their first project was the completion of this 42-line Bible, and they began to market it. Because this Bible had no title page, page numbers, or any other notations to set it apart from a handmade manuscript, the French thought, as the story goes, that it was created by witchcraft. So the French thought that Fust had sold his soul to the devil, and in order to avoid indictment by the French, Fust had to reveal his secret. On this slide, we see page 266 from the Gutenberg Bible. I want you to know that the decorations were added separately after it was printed on the printing press. This also includes the large decorated capitals. As I've said before, the specialization of trades and crafts happened along with the production of the book design. So on this slide is an illustration from the Book of Trades that was done in 1568 by Joost Aman. And I want you to refer to page 74 in your book uh, to read the description of each one of these different craftsmen that were involved in the production of a manuscript. After Fuss let Gutenberg out of his shop, Fust and Schoffer became the most important printing firm in Europe. In 1457, Fust and Schoffer produced the Psalter in Latin. This is simply a book that contains psalms from the Old Testament. The red and blue initials are the earliest example of color printing in Europe. This book was 12 by 17 and contained a few major innovations. These innovations were decorated to color initials, and it also contained a printer's trademark, date of publication, and what we call a colophon. You need to be able to define colophon, and this is what this colophon reads. This colophon reads, this book of Psalms decorated with beautiful capitals 
and with an abundance of rubrics, has been fashioned thus by an ingenious invention of printing and stamping without the use of a pen. And to the worship of God, it has been diligently brought to completion by Johann Fust, a citizen of Mainz, and Peter Schoffer of Gershenheim, in the year of our Lord, 1457, on the eve of the Feast of Assumption. Let's look at another typographic book printed by Fust and Schoffer called The Rationale of Holy Duties. I want you to know what important innovations were contained in this book. Now, during the time that Fust and Schoffer were selling Bibles and Psalters, Gutenberg, even though he was down, he wasn't out, he was still able to establish a new printing shop. There he published a 36-line Bible and a reprint of the 42-line Bible. He also published other volumes and eventually was appointed courier with the rank of nobleman, which gave him certain entitlements. His financial partner, Dr. Omri, after he died in 1468, gained ownership of his printing shop. The equipment was eventually moved because of a local bloody conflict, and eventually presses were established elsewhere, as far as Italy and France. The information that I would like you to know from this chapter ends here. In our next chapter, we will look at the German illustrated book, which then spread printing to France and Italy.